Hello! Today I travel with my new monster truck. I went out of town where there is no asphalt, only some stones and sand. All of the wheels of the monster truck are heavy and they raise a dust that's difficult to see anything. The windows are all dusty and the whole car is also very dirty. It's necessary to wash it. So, I'm going to the car wash. Oh, there's a line here. The small smart car is in front of me. Let's wait. It only takes a few minutes because the automatic washing system does its job very quickly. Now the smart car is going to be washed and then my turn. Okay, the wash is done. I told you, everything very quickly. We are going in the tunnel. At the same time, we are going to see what it looks like inside a car wash. This car wash is one where a car is washed by various automatic devices. So it's called an automatic car wash. The car wash consists of several parts and each has its own task. First, the car is watered, washing away the sand and pieces of the ground and all of the dirt that is adhered to the vehicle body. I'm just going in the first compartment of a car wash and the water is supplied on the car from above with a very special opening under very strong pressure. That is to quickly wash off the top layer of dirt. You see, the water supply comes from different directions, the top, the sides, even at the level of the wheels. At the same time the car's body, its roof and windows, and the wheels are washed. After a wash with water on all sides, we go to the next section. Now a lot of foam will be sprayed on top of the car. See, this foam is so white and thick that now our big SUV looks like a snowdrift. Wow! Once the monster truck is covered with the foam, we go to the compartment with a large brush set. They will rub the car, wash the foam out and clean the dirt that was left on the car after being washed with water. Long vertical brushes are needed to clean the car body and small brushes are used to clean the bottom of the wheels. Another brush on top, you can see, it is round like the wheel and it cleans the windshield, the roof of the car and even the spare tire on the trunk. After cleaning, the car is watered under strong pressure again. Water washes away the remnants of the foam and the car becomes very clean. Now we only have to dry our SUV. We are going into the compartment where on top of the car the hot air is supplied. It's like a hair dryer, but very large. Well, the car washing is done. We go out of the tunnel. Wow! Wow! The monster truck is now as good as new. Such a brilliant and bright color. And it just took a few minutes. I am very pleased with the car wash. It is convenient that the driver can stay in the car and watch his car be washed. And you just need a few minutes. Do you guys like it? Then I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Beep beep. Friends, I am at the railway station, going on a train ride. It will be more comfortable and faster than by car. Did you know, my friends, that trains were invented much earlier than cars? First, it was steam trains. They had a steam engine that worked thanks to the accumulation of water vapor. People used wood, 
oil, and coal to fuel these trains. The fuel burned and water vapor accumulated in the boiler, and this is what resulted in the movement of the locomotive wheels. The locomotive is the first and main carriage in the train. It pulls all other carriages. But the locomotive cannot carry passengers and luggage. The driver of the train is called the conductor. There is a person who is responsible for the fuel supply to the boiler. He is called the stoker. These trains had carriages for passengers and for big loads. It's interesting that the train has two signals. One is quiet and a high-pitched whistle that reported about various maneuvers on the train. Second, Typhon is always loud and a lower sound. It is mostly used in the route of the train. In front of the locomotive, there is a big round lamp on top, the projector or the spotlight. The trains nowadays look different. Also, they have different fuel, called diesel. Modern trains are more powerful, faster, and more reliable. People go on train rides with pleasure. It's so comfortable. Sometimes, you can get from one city to another much faster by a train than by car. In addition, they are very useful when you want to transfer very big things. Trains can carry different dangerous things, and there are special signs on such carriages. Trains also can transfer cars on the open platforms. Look here, my friends. It's an electric train, which uses electricity to move. It looks like a tram or trolley with their attachment on top that attaches to the electrical energy. Electric trains are often used for close distance. They can go fast enough and without any noise. It's important when they go past the city. Electric trains are used only for passengers. Oh, I almost forgot. Trains go on special rails. They make the route for trains. There are special traffic regulations and signs. There is a gate on a railway crossing that informs the drivers about the traffic. If the gate is down and the railway traffic light is red, it means the train is coming and other transport cannot go. There is a loud signal too. Okay, my friends, I will go now. My train is going to leave soon. I need to find my carriage, too. Wow, here is my compartment. The train ride started. Hooray! Look at the beautiful view from the train. I think the trip will be exciting. I'll see many new cities, different cultures, and traditions. Okay. So today we learned a lot about trains. We saw the first trains and learned about their fuel. And we learned a little bit about regulations on the railway. It was so interesting. Bye bye, see you soon. Friends, I'm sure you remember that I went on a train ride. So, the weekends are over now and I'm going back home. I've decided to go by plane this time. It's going to be faster and more comfortable. I'm at the airport now. Wow, it's so impressive here. The electro car transfers luggage to the plane, which is on the airfield. Here is the plane with the propeller engines. Look there, the car with flashing lights. There are workers from the airport who serve the planes. There is a tanker truck with fuel for the plane behind them. And there is a special tractor tag for the plane. While I'm waiting for my plane departure, I will tell you a little bit about planes. First of all, about the Airbus I'm going to fly on.
This is a jet plane with four engines. It can fly at a great distance. The wheels on the plane are called chassis. When the plane takes off, they fold up. And when the plane lands, they open up. The plane has two floors, two decks. It can transfer more than 500 passengers. In addition, there are jets, aircrafts, and turboprops. They usually carry goods. This plane has a turbine on each wing that turns and picks up the plane in the air. Wow! You can also see fighter jets. It's a very fast plane and usually used for war. These planes are not for travelers. Planes were different before. They didn't fly so fast and so far like modern aircrafts. For example, the plane named biplane has two wings, one above the other. It also has a big propeller in the front and chassis that do not fold up. The biplane flew very close to the ground because it had an open cabin. Oh, I've just heard the announcement about my plane. The landing started. I need to go, my friends. I will have to check in and receive a boarding pass. Look, I'm in the plane now. We took off. Wow, it's so interesting to look out the window and watch how we fly above the city. I can clearly see the streets and houses below. And clouds! I love it. See you soon, my friends. Bye! Today, Handy Andy has a ride on a tram to the city. He is going to tell you himself. Hello, my friends. I'm on the tram. I left my car at home and decided to go by tram. When you drive the car, you don't see the beautiful nature around you. But the tram is going slow. You can sit by the window and see all of the nice scenery. Do you know what the tram is? I'll tell you. The tram is a special transport that goes on the rails. It takes passengers to different places. It uses electricity that goes through the wire to the current collectors. They are on the tram's roof. The tram has a cabin for the driver and carriages for the passengers. New trams have two cabins for the driver. It's very convenient when the tram goes to the last stop. The driver just moves to the other cabin and starts the route to the opposite direction. You have to know special safety regulations for the passengers of the tram. If you stand inside the tram, you have to hold on to the handrails above your head or to the railing like I'm doing. If you don't, the tram can suddenly stop and you can fall down. Oh, what happened? The tram braked. Did you hear that sound? It's an emergency stop. I will go out of the tram and check what happened. Oops, there's an emergency. The tram derailed. The front driver's cabin and some carriages are on the asphalt now. 
We have to call emergency service and ask for help. The tram blocked the road for cars and there will be a traffic jam soon. Hello? Emergency? We need your help here. The tram derailed. It happened at the city's first crossroad. Okay. Our emergency service will come and put the tram back to the rails. Look, my friends. Hooray! The big crane came to help the tram. It stopped. Now, it is lifting up its hoist. It slightly pulls the crane boom. It grabs the first carriage and lifts the tram a bit, putting it back to the rails. Hooray! The tram can go on its route. Thank you, Crane, for your help. Now I can go back to my carriage. I'm going to continue my trip. Hope everything will be all right. So, today I told you about the tram and how it works. You saw that the tram can accidentally derail. In such a situation, we should call emergency service. It was very interesting. See you soon, my friends. Bye. Today, Handy Andy is working hard in the garage. He is a very interesting and difficult task. He is going to tell you about everything himself. Hi, my friends. Come inside. Hello. I'm really busy today in the garage. My friend took his old pickup to my garage. It's hardly working. He wanted to hand over the car for scrap, but I persuaded him to give it to me. I have one interesting idea, to make a monster truck. Let's start. First, we should lift a car a bit with a hoist and take off the wheels. And then, the old brake discs with shock absorbers. We don't need them anymore. Open the hood and take out an engine with a hoist. Now, let's paint the pickup bright orange with a special spray. Wow! Look! The car looks like a new one now. While the car is getting dry after painting, we will find a new suspension. We need more power, so we are going to put new big wheels on the pickup. Here is a suspension. Fasten it with the screws. Now the wheels. First install the back and then the front wheels. Strengthen the bottom with the new suspension rails. At the back of the box, Fasten the frame with spotlights. Install the exhaust pipe on the side of the body. Also, put a metal protection on the front bumper. Here is a super new engine. On the roof, establish the horns. On the rear bumper, fasten the boxes. So there is still a spare tire. We'll set it on the frame at the rear. Hooray! Our monster truck is ready now! Look! It's amazing! The engine is so powerful! It's a supercar! It is so high that holes and any obstacles don't really matter for it. I really want to have a test drive. We are going to the road without asphalt. There are a lot of holes and stones, but I'm sure we can do it. Let's go! We are going up the hill so easy. Great! Well done! 
We did a great job for a short period. We turned an old pickup into a super monster truck, painted it with bright paint, changed the suspension, installed big wheels, and changed the engine. Now we can even take part in racing. Do you like it? Okay. See you soon. Beep beep.